Talk, where we talk with uh, ASEX companies and get an update of um, their journey, uh, the projects, how they're going. Uh, we're at the UWA Club here in Crawley on the University of West Australian campus. I've got uh, Alan Kelly here back from Miramar Resources, uh, the ASX coast M2 arm, and our current market cap is 6.3 million. And uh, Alan, welcome back. Uh, Thanks. I know that 6.3 million doesn't fall good on you, but mate, it's probably cheap for investors now. Oh yeah, especially when we've got like about three and a half million in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that gives us an EV of three million, which yep. I think is, you know, is, is very good value for money. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. Look, Alan, um, since our last conversation, there's a few things happening. I can yep. see in your announcements. Yep. Give us an update on what's been happening. Yeah, we're, we're always busy. Um, you know, it might not look like it sometimes, but we're always busy working on Gigi or working on other projects behind the scenes. Um, on the corporate side, we, we did a capital raising back in May and we topped up the kitty with uh, 2.4 million before costs. And then we just announced a couple of days ago that we closed our rights issue that we did as well. So that was, that was really pleasing. We did a, a rights issue for options at one cent with a 25 cent option uh, exercise price. And we got an 80% take up on that. So that, that gives us another $260,000 on top of the money we raised before. So, you know, off the top of our head, that, that gives us about three and a half million. So, you know, we're well, we're well funded still. We've got lots of things that we're working on. Um, and one of the really frustrating things at the moment is just trying to get assays in and keep the news flow going. So, um, you know, we, we're doing work, but we're not seeing results from the labs for a long time. So it might look like to people that we're not doing much, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. I can see that you made an announcement uh, 30th of June, which is, feels like a long, long way away. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, with the results that's coming out from there, yeah. one of the key points I, I took up from the announcement was that you, you, you're getting some decent bedrock numbers now. Yep. Yep. Can you just give us a narrative on that thought in that announcement? Yeah, so those, those results that we put out were from air core holes at Gigi. It was from re-splits from work that we did in December. Yeah, believe it or not, these are, these are holes that were drilled in December. We got the original assay results in April, and then we did re-splits and we've only just got those. So, you know, this, that shows you the, the turnaround time that we're getting at the moment. But we're consistently getting air core hits of plus two grams, plus five grams, plus eight grams, and they're definitely in bedrock. They're not, you know, it's not alluvial material. It's not transported gold. And the evidence for that is that we're consistently seeing high silver numbers, which tells you that's primary, not alluvial. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, um, we're also seeing sulfides. We're seeing fresh sulfides. Um, and there was a really good hole. I can't remember the name of the number of the hole. I think it was 562, which is sort of at the northwestern end of Marlebone. And that, that was like yeah, a couple of metres at three grams, but it had, you know, 12 grams silver, uh, had copper, it had molly, it had tungsten, all sorts of stuff. And when I actually went and had a look at the sample on the ground the other day when I was up in Kalgoorlie and there's fresh sulphides all over the place. So there's no doubt that there's primary mineralisation at Gigi, you know, that we're starting to focus in on. But really the challenge for us now is to go from the sort of thin horizontal sort of weathered primary material into that fresher bedrock and show the, you know, find the thicker sort of economic grades and widths of mineralisation that are going to make a project fly. Okay. Because those numbers are good numbers, right? Yeah, one metre at 9.55, two at four, of which one was at seven. Yeah, they're, seven. they're, they're great air core numbers, you yeah. know. They're, they're, but the challenge for us is that um, at Gigi, we only see a couple of metres of it because the weathered profile has been stripped by the paleo channel. So normally, if you were, if you were in what we'd call a, a, a residual or a, a preserved regolith profile, you would see sort of bigger, thicker intervals of that in, in the sort of saprolite. But ours has been like scoured off by the, by the paleo channel. So, so I've sort of used the analogy, if you... You think about Gigi, you've got all this layered sort of geology that goes in a northwesterly direction, 
and then there's this paleo channel that sort of cuts across it in a northerly direction you know at, almost at right angles to the geology and that's like scoured it off so it's only left us with like a thin layer of weathered material and air core drilling you don't get very far into the bedrock you, we drill to what we call refusal so you're getting through the paleo channel and then you get a couple of meters of weathered and then it stops so that's all you get to look at so you know originally we were going well is this transported or is it residual um, is it weathered bedrock but now all of these hits are coming from weathered bedrock so now like i say the challenge is to go from that sort of thin weathered material into the bedrock and find the actual bedrock source of that um, so actually over the last couple of weeks we did some uh, rc holes at marlebone east which was a target where we had consecutive air core holes of like nine grams eight grams 11 grams in in a row um, so those are like 50 meters wide so that was about a 200 meter wide zone and we hit a dolerite which looks like what you see at paddington very altered quartz veining and sulfide veins um, the first hole one of the first holes we did we got a meter at a gram on the contact between the, the dolerite and the ultramafic rocks so that's the first time we've actually seen sort of ore grade gold in the bedrock but obviously that's pretty skinny you know grams are right but it's pretty skinny so what we'd, we did is a couple more holes on that Marlebone East sort of trend to see if we could actually get something a bit better within that dolerite um, and we're waiting on those results now and that's the, really the first sort of systematic testing of any of the bedrock targets under under an air core anomaly so so if is that the answer to a question where you know when i look at where you guys are um, how closely to vectoring that primary source Would yeah that be sort of the answer in, in yeah some ways? yeah so i guess the the question is the, the, the question for us is um where is the best target right so we've got lots of targets and some we haven't even tested yet we can talk about them in a minute but um, when we did the capital raising that gave us a bit more confidence to accelerate things a bit you know we had two million in the bank before we did the capital raising we could have put that entire money at Gigi and double that triple that no worries at all so we said well if we do that though we are gonna neglect all our other projects so we raised that money and then one of the first things that I went right back to basics, looked at all the data we had and did a targeting exercise from scratch and, and put on all the ingredients that you would want to see from a, you know, from an orogenic gold system. And there's really three key components that, of that, the structure, the geology, and if, if there's any fluid or actually gold there. So you go through and rank them all and you're looking at things like, you know, are you on a major structure? Is there a jog in the structure? Is there cross-cutting faults on that structure? And then you look at the geology. Is there a competency contrast between two different rock types? That's really important. Um, the other thing is gold likes iron. So you want to look for rocks that have got a bit of iron in them, you know, banded iron formation or a basalt or a dolerite or an ultramafic. So you start then layering all these things together. And what we worked out is we got, we've got a number of really good targets, but they're all at different stages of our knowledge. The Marlebone's obviously more advanced, but something like Barara North, we haven't even drilled yet. But that's got the same geology as Marlebone. So I guess I'm always a bit um, hesitant to go full bore into one target if I don't know if that's actually the best target yet. So there's this sort of balancing act of trying to bring everything up to a sort of similar level of knowledge, but also progressing the thing that looks the best. But if it looks the best and then you test it and it doesn't really come up with the goods, then you sort of got to like, okay, you got to then change your ideas a bit. So we're getting closer. You know, we've seen, we've seen the right looking rocks. Like, so we've seen some really nice looking dolerite, which hosts mineralization at Paddington and Panglo and all these other places. Um, we've seen sulphides and alteration. The super pit's full of dolerites. Yeah, well, you know, there was a really good talk, uh, one of the Raglan talks in Kalgoorlie last week, I think it was, and it was on dolerites. And in WA, 
dolerite is the biggest host rock of gold. So it's not just the gold mile dolerite, but the junction dolerite down in Cambalda and the condenser dolerite. And they even talked about, you know, breaker out at Lake Row. That's a dolerite too. So dolerites are a very important host rock and we've got we've got them there and we've got them in the right positions, but we don't have the same level of knowledge that some of these other guys have. So we've sort of got to work up the knowledge and also try and progress the most important ones. So. I mean, when we, in your announcement, I mean, you talked about, of the, and you've, you've mentioned it today, about the, the slowness in getting the essays, and you, you, I think you've got a, a hundred AC holes you're waiting on. Yep. If you had to, to sort of, obviously it's part of your exploration that, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you, you do a lot of postulating on where could these numbers sit, right? Yep. You, you don't have a hundred percent, you're not saying yep. that you know, but. Where do you think these numbers could sit? Because you can see some consistency in your numbers. Yep, yep. We're getting really consistent, sort of thin, sort of one, two, three metres at, you know, plus two, plus five grams per tonne at this sort of super gene um, level. And that's really good. Um, but the one I... So going back to what we we're just talking about with the modelling and how we're talking about, you know, structure and lithology and, and things like that... Um, one of the really important uh, ingredients is a competency contrast. And what, that I'm, what I mean by that is having two rock types next to each other that are different. And the classic example of that is a basalt and a sediment. And the basalt, the, bas the sediment's nice and soft, and the basalt is really brittle, or the dolerite is really brittle. And if you have them right next to each other on a structure, what happens when, the, when they've got the fluid with the gold it comes through, it comes through the nice soft stuff, hits the hard stuff, and then drops out. So that, that scenario of a sort of a mafic sediment contact is a very common gold model. And Marlebone probably is not as good for that model. So at Marlebone you've got a dolerite sitting in ultramafic. So there's not as much difference between the dolerite and the ultramafic. But Blackfriars, which is the new one that we discovered, that sits on this mafic sediment contact. And we've got one gram hits along that contact for at least a kilometre. And the northernmost hole that we have assays for at the moment finished in 11 grams per tonne at the end of the hole with sulphides. So to me, at this stage, I go, okay, Marlebone's really good and there's lots of gold and there's lots of smoke. But in terms of the geology, I reckon black fries is actually better because we've got this mafic sediment contact and then we've got this intrusion on that contact. So I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what the results come back from on black fries. And then the next one over, which is called Highway, that had no drilling on it. That was an auger anomaly and it straddles the highway. Right, so it hadn't been drilled. So we looked at the organ anomaly and said, oh, we should drill this as well, because it's like parallel, you've got Marlebone, Blackfriars Highway. And when we drilled it, it's all black flag sediments, so nice soft sediments. But we hit this intrusion, intrusive unit, for again, for like over a kilometre. And one of the holes, which is next to the highway, pretty much on a line by itself it's got fresh quartz veins sulfides and stuff in a porphyry so you that's that brittle unit within a softer host rock so if you've got a structure with gold comes through the softer sediments then hits that brittle unit that's where the gold can drop out so you know i think both of those targets are really really interesting and i think black fries is probably conceptually a better target and and the other thing interesting thing about black fries is black fries is actually more like paddington than marlebone because at, at Gigi we've got these sort of two mafic sequences we've got a, a mafic unit here which would be the paddington equivalent and we've got a mafic unit here which would be the panglo equivalent and that's where marlebone east is black fries is actually here so black fries actually looks more like paddington than marlebone and it looks more like Aphrodite. So Aphrodite is one of the deposits up at Bardock, and that sits on the mafic sediment contact with the intrusion, and that's a million ounces. 
So Are they missing essays coming from Black Friday? Yeah. So those 100 holes that we're waiting on are infill holes at Blackfriars and the first pass at Highway. So we've already seen, we've already seen hits up to 11 grams per tonne at, at Blackfriars and we've got one gram hits all over, but they were all wide, they were like 400 by 100, now we've got 200 by 50 and we're waiting on all that. So I would, I, based on what I've seen on the other tenements, I would expect that we'd get some pretty good numbers out of Blackfriars. And, it, and, it's, and it's more discreet, it's a sort of more discreet target, whereas Marlebone's sort of a bit, there's like patches all over the place. But I think Blackfriars could be, could be really, really interesting. And I reckon Highway's going to have some numbers as well, based on just on the chips that we've seen in the ground. So, yeah. Um, going along your models and what you've just dis dis you know, discussed, you know, uh, in your presentations, there was this pr one page on your model for Gigi. Yep, yep. So what I'm trying to get is, you know, what level of frustration are you at now knowing that model, knowing some essays, and then you could deal with the essays not coming back so soon. Yep. You know, where, where is your thinking? Is it, it is, frustration is a very good word that I use a lot at the moment, because, you know, the simple process is you come up with a target, you drill it, you get the assays, and you go back and follow it up, and so forth and so forth. So the problem is at the moment is just waiting so long for those results you can't go back to that target and keep testing it so then you have to go off to another target and drill that and then off to another target and drill that and then hopefully at that stage you've got the assays back and you come to here so you know there might be some level of frustration in the market as why we're we not going harder at this but we don't have the we don't have the results to go back you can't see gold you can't see gold mineralization in most cases right so you know you, 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 the good thing is that we've got a number of targets to test, so we can keep sort of working on others while we're waiting on the results. Um, so, you know, we're, we've just got all our heritage approvals and everything to go up to Barara North. So Barara North is like the northern third of the project that we've done no work on yet, because we had to get, you know, get the tenements granted, get POW approval and heritage done. But that's four kilometres of the same geological sequence that we see at Marlebone, Blackfriars and Highway. It's, again, there's no outcrop, it's under, but this time it's not under a paleo channel, it's just under sort of like thin lake sediments and scrubby sort of sand dune country. But that's four kilometres of the Barara Shear Zone with the same geology. All the previous drilling was very shallow and didn't get into basement. And so we're about to go up there. I think we will kick off that program maybe just before diggers, probably around just before diggers, so end of July, early August. That's like and that's two a, weeks' time. Yeah, that's a 200-hole program. So what we've done is because of this issue with a lab turnaround, normally we'd go you know, 400 by 100 and then you go back and do 200 by 50, you know. This, so we said, oh, stuff that. We basically put the two phases together. Again, doing the capital raising allows us to do that. We said, right, we're going to go in and do like phase one and two at the same time. So we're, we're so confident, you know, about the, where that is, that we're going to do 200 by 50 straight away, 200 holes. It'll take us about, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks to do that. But, and then we'll wait. <laughs> and we, but hopefully then we've got Black Fries and Highway yeah. results back, right? But that, that's a key, that, that Barara North again is a key, uh, a key target. But one of the other things, while I was sort of working up all the, the stuff for Barara North, there's some, some historic RC, RC drilling at a thing called, we call Lake. And, um, you know, there's hits there like two at five and three at three and stuff like that in RC drilling that's only 150 metres deep. And and this is this drilling goes back to like, late 90s there's no work since then and there's nice westerly dipping mineralization in black flag sediments there's a structural jog and a bit of a demagnetized zone and it looks like it's sort of west dipping and north plunging a bit but where they drilled to the north the drilling was too shallow so we're going to you know quickly work that up get all the heritage stuff done there and get probably get an rc rig out there as well and just to the south of that along strike off our tenement there's actually a thing called Gigi Dam, 
which is a little historic underground resource and a proposed open pit and it looks like it's directly a long strike from that so that's a pretty nice target too that we've done no work on yet so this I guess this is all evidence for this idea that Gigi is a camp it's got it's got mm. opportunity for multiple discoveries and you know I've, I've said to a few people like I could basically get rid of all our other projects and just focus on Gigi but there's really good potential on other projects as well. So we've got, to, we've got to just sort of be a bit patient and systematic and, like I said, getting information about these new targets and trying to progress the, the important ones or, or test them and move them on, you know? I mean, that goldfields, well, that area between Kalgoorlie and Paddington is well studied, I guess, to some degree, right? And, and but from you... From yes, your yes and no. Yeah, yes that was no. my, my point is, how how much understanding would you have, do you have, on the structure and the geology? I mean, are you thinking, it's dipping this way, but is, is in the back of your mind, are you thinking, oh, maybe we got that not right? We had that, we had that exact discussion last week when we were out there with the RC rig. Because it, it's probable that all the geology dips to the west, like steeply to the west, sub-vertical yeah. to the west. So most of our drilling is to the east. But these dolerites are actually later. So they, they come in and sort of do this and move around. So they can, they can change, change their dip yeah. as well. So the, question, the, the answer to the question about the dolerite, if the dolerite is the host unit, we don't know. We don't have enough drilling to say whether it's east dipping vertical yeah. or west dipping. So hence, that's why we have to drill holes. We, we drilled a diamond hole um, last week it was the first diamond hole we drilled at Marlebone East and, and, it, and it was only because the RC hole got caught up in the paleo channel and we ended up having to do a tail on it but we saw this dolerite, we saw all this veining it still didn't tell us which way it was dipping just you know. turn the rig around mate. well we got it, we, yeah well we, we don't know yet the answer, yeah. the, the answer to that question is we don't know um, and when you're saying oh it's been very well studied yes and no um, there's been a bit of work done on the Barara shear zone or the Bardock tectonic zone, but most of that is focused up on the sort of Paddington to the north because all this bit down here is all covered and it's never been explored. We are the first people to actually go there and actually do a bit of work. There's some there's really good papers on the Barara shear zone by a guy called Anthony Morey, um, but they talk about Golden Ridge and Barara down here which outcrops. And then they talk about Paddington and um, New Boddington and Young Garga. They all outcrop. And so there's this bit in the middle where we are that's pretty much unknown. And that's because of the transporter cover, because of the paleo channel, and because of the ownership. You know, Paddington had it and dropped it. Casey Gem had it and dropped it. So it's like this sort of no man's land in the middle the unwanted, the unloved cousin. You know, like us, the cheapest house in the best street. But it's yeah, like yeah. the no man's land in the middle. That's sort of been neglected because it was a bit hard. You know, Mate, so it's many... hard for us too. We got we got a road, we got a railway line, we got a, uh, we got a pipeline for the Gigi Roaster all over the top of what we're doing. You know, so it's. I mean, there are many times when we when we used to have a project up in Mount in the Mount Pleasant area, Paddington yep, area. Yep, up a bit I further would drive north. out from Kalgoorlie. Yep. And I will look out and go thinking, I wonder if anyone's done stuff. And this is where you guys are working now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know? It's amazing that, that it's so close to Kalgoorlie and has had, I'd say, less than 1% of the work of this and this. Yeah. That, but that's the opportunity, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the opportunity. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I, I, had a, I had a meeting with a couple of people a few weeks ago and they were getting all frustrated and saying you know why you know why are you drilling out a resource and why are you doing that i said this we, we started from scratch we started with a blank canvas here and it's worse than a blank canvas because it's got 50 meters of transported cover so we are all this stuff we've done we generated from basically from zero and and i think i i honestly believe that there's potential for a camp here so Paddington was discovered in 82, 1982, by drilling beneath 
existing shafts and costines and stuff and went into production in 85, okay? So it took three years to drill out a resource from something that was outcropping, you know? And we, we're undercover, you know, we've been out for two years, started with a blank canvas in the worst market for getting drill rigs and assays and all that that you can imagine. I think we're doing all right, you know? And I, I'm, we have to be systematic and not panic and not try and jump the gun. Because I've seen a couple of people lately that have, done air core drilling and then gone, oh, well, we know what's going on here and jumped straight to, you know, diamond drilling or whatever and then hasn't worked out. So we've got to be careful and be systematic about testing the things, you know. I think Gigi, I mean, Miramar slash is Gigi and Gigi is Miramar. Yeah. Um, and I think this is one in, one in lifetime opportunity in a patch of ground that is now starting to show that first of all, as you say, it's it looks it is a camp. Second of all, the consistency of those numbers I'm seeing, you don't get if it's a patch here and a nah, patch there. Nah, nah, something you, there's is, a lot of gold. Yeah, in something's system. a miss. So, and I think you're right. You hit it. People need to understand that this story is you can't let it go, and you've got to be really controlled because it's systematic exploration, elimination. It's it's the game here. It's not. Yep. You, you can't just go and bang, you know, something deep holes and yep. deep holes are not going to give you the answers. Yep. Understanding the ground's going to, this is your classic exploration. We've, we've got a variety, we've got a variety of targets, you know, they're, they're all different styles. You know, we've got deeper stuff at eight mile potentially, we've got this stuff at lake, we've got this thing at the jogged test. But the real bread and butter is the, the Marlebones and the Black Fries and the highways and then the stuff maybe at Barara North if we're lucky as well. Because that eight, eight mile thing in, could almost be a red herring, right? If, you, if yeah. you're chasing that style, you actually could be missing yep. what is there, right? Well, the, the thing with eight mile too is it's deep. Yeah. So we, we found out a bit about eight mile over the last sort of 12 months or so. When we listed, we knew about this thing called Runway, which was south of our tenement boundary. And it was supposedly, it was this porphyry dipping to the west. It was about 200 metres below surface, but it wasn't known whether it continued onto our ground, okay? But there'd been no work since 2013. So we, so we stepped out, did a couple of diamond holes. We hit the same geology. Yes, it dips to the west. Yes, it's about 200 metres below surface, but there was no gold in it. So okay? Oh, okay. So we tested the target, move on. But then in December last year, suddenly Northern Star pop up on our southern boundary again. But this time, they're drilling to the west, which implies is dipping to the east. Yeah. And they're also drilling deeper. They're drilling 600, 700, 800 metre holes. So the, the, the sort of I guess the rumours that we're hearing is is that they've hit something else, but it's deeper. It's below runway. Oh, okay. It's not runway. It's something else. But they spent a lot of time drilling diamond holes there. So we worked. Okay, if they're drilling 700 metres and it's dipping to the west, this thing must be 400 metres below surface. We don't know any results because Northern Star don't not going to say anything about it. Now. Me as an exploration geologist, well, I'd love to go out and drill it. But me as a manager trying to manage our money and making sure that the money goes to the best things, mm. that's a big call, a 700 metre diamond hole when you don't even know what you're looking for. Mm. That's like a million dollars almost, you know, by yeah. everything. So, so yes, that's there. And we've done a couple of things. We've done some IP. We've done, gone back and done some more IP, and we can see a target. Eight, we can see eight mile. It, yeah, we can see a target below where we drilled before, at probably 400, 500 metres below surface. So it's we're sitting there going, okay, waiting for the opportune time to do that. Yeah, yeah. But it's but you know the price of that one diamond hole is probably the whole Barara North program. Mm, mm. So you go, yeah. Where am I going to get bang for my buck? Yeah. And then there's, um, I mean, in your one announcement, you did mention seeing some Kamati type textured oh, yep. stuff, and, yep. and, and that's obviously bruised nickel. Yep, yep. We, how, how is that thinking going? So, yeah, so we've got, we've got this unit called the Highway Ultramafic. It's on the sort of far eastern side of, of the Barara Shear Zone. 
and um, that's the same unit that hosts the Scotia Nickel Mine, that Western Mining Mine, and the um, and the Saints Deposit where Auroc are developing as well. That's the same unit, okay? Um, so there's potential there. When we do our air core drilling for gold, we always do multi-element. We do about, I think, 30 elements. So that includes stuff like nickel, copper, chromium, cobalt, and magnesium. So all the things that you use to look for nickel. So there are some really nice nickel copper numbers. Um, and there's a suggestion that there could be a basal contact on the eastern side of the ultramafic. So again, that means that is everything's sort of dipping to the west and young up this way and bottom that way. So as we do more and more air core around Marlebone, we look at those nickel numbers. Um, the, the thing you've got to be careful about with nickel is that um, compared with gold, nickel can occur as nickel sulphides, which is what everyone wants, but it can also occur as nickel in the actual ultramafic. Ultramafics host a lot of nickel, just as nickel, nickel silicate minerals, olivines and stuff. So just because you see a lot of nickel in, in, in a rock doesn't mean that there's sulphides there. So then you've got to look at nickel and copper and chromium and all those other things, and cobalt as well as a key. And you can also get lateric nickel, as we all know. So you have to be careful sometimes that if you're seeing elevated nickel and copper and things like that, that it's not just coming from a nickel laterite. That's probably less of an issue for us, because remember I said before, our, our regular's been stripped off. So we only see a small bit of weathering. So there's only a small potential for the nickel to get upgraded through lateritic weathering. So any elevated stuff that we see is more likely to be related to sulphides. But we haven't, to be honest, we haven't actually done that much on that yet because we've been waiting on all these other results. There are ideas there. The main bit of Marlebone, the ultramafic is folded and nice and thick. So that would be a really good target for nickel but we just haven't done any follow-up there yet. We're just we're sort of waiting to see where these other assays go. Okay. Um, you know, on the other projects, I mean, we've been very Gigi focused and I, I, I kind of like Gigi a lot now, more so than before, I think. Yeah. But you, your other projects is, is are good projects, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we're we're going to be really busy over the next... Well, we've always been busy, but we're going to be even busier over the next month, two months. Um, our Glandor project, which sits about 40 k's east of Kalgoorlie, um, is really underdone at the moment. And that's that's because, um, you know, we've been focused on Gigi's partly because of that, but also a lot of the Glandor project is on the lake. And there's a really good target called Glandor East, where there's some historic diamond drilling that hit quartz veins at the contact between granite and mafic and those holes were drilled a few years ago and there's this whole this whole hits up to like four meters at 40 grams and stuff and so there's walk up diamond drill targets there but they're on the lake so you need a lake diamond rig so you know drill rigs are rare <laughs> lake rigs are even rarer and lake diamond rigs are even rarer again and to my knowledge is only about three companies in WA that have lake rigs and they're all busy. So we've actually gone to Mount Isa and found a crew in Mount Isa who are going to come and do it. Because we've been waiting for about 18 months to try and get a rig out there and it's just, it's frustration was a good word again. So so this is a lake... A lake diamond a, rig. rig. A okay. lake diamond rig. So big, big footprint so it's got low pressure for going on the lake. So they should be out there hopefully in mid-August and we'll be drilling holes to follow up those high-grade hits there. And, you know, this is a walk-up drill target. You know, these are, are good hits. Um, you've, got a, you've got a granite, you've got a mafic sequence and the granite's intruded into it. It looks like there's northeast structures. It's a lot like Majestic where black cat are. And you've got these veins that dip to the uh, west. Um, and it looks like there's a plunge component and that, that's why maybe the previous drilling hasn't sort of joined them up. They haven't got the plunge right. So that's what we're going to try and work out with our diamond drilling, if we can follow up these high grade hits. Um, and if that program goes well, that could quite easily work out to be something that could have a resource pretty quickly. 
because it's bedrock drill testing of high grade structures. A bit more, bit more like Andy Well, right? Where you, you, you're, you're stepping out from known mineralisation, whereas, you know, at Gigi, we're sort of still focusing in on it. In Glandale, you're sort of going out the other way almost. So, so that's going to be busy. Uh, that's in August, hopefully mid August, we'll be out there. Um, at the moment, somewhere between about 1,500 and 2,000 metres of diamond drilling on the lake. Not super deep holes, only sort of 150 metre holes, because they don't need to be deep. Um, the Barara North drilling, as I said, that will go off as well. That's about 200 holes, air core holes up at Barara. We're also, before we start at Barara, we're going to do a quick 30 hole program at Randalls, which is a folded banded iron formation out near Silver Lake. Yeah, so it's going to use the same rig for Randalls as Barara North. So they're going to start there, it's about 30 holes, and then they're going to go to Barara North because I want to get the Randalls stuff done and then so we can make a decision what we do there. And then the other one is Whale Shark. So we're getting up to Whale Shark. So, um, so Whale Shark, big ICG target up uh, near Onslow, folded banded iron formation with a granite. That's where we did the MMI soil sampling and we got some really nice copper, uranium, rare earth soil anomalies. And there's only about sort of 50 to 100 metres of cover there. So it's not, not that bad to test. Um, so the plan is we're getting a track mounted air core rig. Uh, on, they call it a Maruka on a, on a sort of mo more mobile sort of thing. So we're trying to minimise the environmental impact up there, trying to minimise the amount of clearing we have to do. And we're basically going to do holes on a 250 by 250 metre grid over the soil anomalies. And the idea is to go down through the Carnarvon Basin, which is 40, 50 metres, hit the protozoic bedrock where the mineralisation could be, get a sort of a good sample of the bedrock and do that on a grid and that will give us information about the geology, but also potentially geochemical dispersion from any ICG mineralisation. And the really, the, the, the model for Onslow is Ernest Henry, which is the ICG deposit in um, Queensland, up near Mount Isa. And fortunately for us, there's a really good, basically like an atlas on Ernest Henry. And it's got all the information about Ernest Henry geology, geophysical signatures for like mags and gravity and EM and everything, and also geochem signatures. So there's a really good atlas where it shows all these different elements at like the interface between the cover and the basement. Mm -hmm. Because again, at Ernest Henry, they've got about 40 metres of cover over it. So I can sort of do a direct comparison between what we see at Whale Shark and, and Ernest Henry. Okay. So that, that program is about 130 air core holes. Again, that'll be kicking off in like mid-August. I'm actually going up next week with one of our field crew to go and just do a bit of a recce and go see the pastures and everything to sort of just make sure everything's all set, ready to go. And then that track mounted rig will be up there sometime mid-August. So we're going to have diamond drilling at Glandor, Air core drilling at Barara North and air core drilling at Whale Shark all going on at the same time. Okay. Um, and that's going to be really interesting to see what we get out of Whale Shark as well. So. Okay. Um, probably a good time for us to move away from the technical things into something that I'm pretty sure you love is, you know, how should investors be looking at Miramar? You were six million market cap. Last time we spoke, we were eight to ten. Yeah. Um, well, the market's obviously the market's been. Oh, the market bad. turbulence is. The market is yeah. crazy. Um, you know, we've got some fantastic projects. Any one of them is a company maker. You know, Gigi, Gigi is a you know the gold camp sort of model that um, it's going to take a little bit of time to uncover. But I think there's you know there's potential for you know multiple deposits i guess i'd look at the comparison for for gigi just by itself is like a bardock or a, a polo or even a breaker or something like that you know we obviously got a bit of work to do before we get to that point but that's that's a potential upside if you found a million ounces there you know that's a that's a you know a hundred million valuation or something you know um glandor 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 is 
we went out to Glandor uh, last week with uh, a, a new geo that started working for us and one of our field crew. And we're really excited about Glandor. Glandor is a sleeper. Um, it's got this high grade Glandor East thing, but the air core drilling that we did on the, did on the lake there is really interesting as well. So there, there's, there's, there's a big five kilometre footprint of gold um, that we just haven't done any work on. And it's not because we don't like it, it's just because of the logistics of getting the rig out there. So again, that is really interesting and and its location next to Black Cat, next to Horizon, next to Silver Lake, means that monetizing it could be pretty, you know, straightforward as well. Um, Randall's, Randall's, are, you know, I don't know, but Whale Shark, you know, the target at Whale Shark is a big ICG deposit. So you look at Javier on, look at Ernest Henry, uh, look at some of the other stuff that's happening in the eastern succession around Mount Isa. The target for um, whale shark is a Ernest Henry style thing, you know, 100 million tonnes at 1% copper, 1 gram gold. Now, what's that worth? <laughs> you know, um, so the stuff that people are drilling, the comparisons in South Australia, some of the stuff that's going on there, same sort of targets, but at 500 metres, 700 metres, 800 metres below surface. So I'd much rather be looking at 100 metres of cover than 700 metres of cover. So um, we've got huge upside, that's all I can say. You know, like I think we're really undervalued at the moment. Um, I've seen a couple of companies list recently that have got, you know, valuations of more than us and they've got one project next to one of our projects. And you go, well, hang on, so, so our project's been valued at zero and they've been valued at six million, you know. So I think I'd just say people have got to be patient with the process. Um, we don't waste money. We don't go out and do silly things with the money. We try and um, do things systematically and we think about it and we go out and do it and test it. Um, so, and, and what's really frustrating for me is just the time it takes to actually get results back to actually go back and follow things up. So people got to understand that um, if they're not seeing results, it doesn't mean we're not doing anything. We've, we've got other things that we're working on behind the scenes. You know, we've got a, we've just done IP at Gigi. We've got a, a detailed air mag survey lined up for Glandor. Um, the gravity crew is going to be heading up to Whale Shark in advance of the Air Corps team. There's lots going on and we're trying to we try to do things sensibly and, and sort of intelligently and systematically so that we don't miss anything, you know. All right, look, it's um, probably the best time to end. We've had kids screaming, we've had trucks going, we just had a helicopter go by. Uh, Mate, you know. It's next, live TV. Yeah. <laughs> next thing we know, we'll have the um, aeroplanes flying over with, uh, with colours just because, you know, uh, Alan is, is, is doing his talk. <laughs> But um, look, I really do encourage you guys out to, to, to go and reach out to Alan because I think Miramar is a very unique situation, you know, as, as he said, low market cap, fantastic projects. I mean, you've, you've got to appreciate Gigi for what it is. It's, it's a huge mining camp. It's like walking to Kalgoorlie when nothing was there. And, and, and it is almost yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Without being exaggeration. No, no, right? it's true. Well, it's like, as I said, uh, say, take like Bardock. If you took our Gigi position, and put it over the Bardock tenement position before they got taken over by St. Barbara. It's very similar, except this is all outcropping pretty much, and this has got resources and, and shafts and things that people have known about for 100 years, mm. where this is a, was a blank canvas. Mm. And, and even Paddington, if you drop this over the top of Paddington, it's, it's very similar, but it's undercover, and that's where the opportunity is, you know? Like, even yeah, St. Ives. So St. Ives, you know, it was a nickel nickel camp and then people found some outcropping gold mineralisation in the in the 80s and then they started looking on the lakes and you know what 10 million, 15 million ounces later or something. Yeah. It's sort of similar scale. It's a similar yeah. scale opportunity, but right back here in terms of the history of exploration. You know, we've we've been there eighteen months. You know, so I think I think there's, you know, just our, our market cap 
is not even just you know doing Gigi justice yeah. at the moment, you know? Uh, I mean, Gigi's a fantastic story as we've just been repeating ourselves. But Whale Shark, I think, you know, 50 metres cover is in the IOCG world is like no cover. Yeah. In the, in the goal world. Um, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, Even, it yeah, is I'm unique like for that and um, should really encourage you guys to reach out and just get a better understanding of where uh, Miramar and the projects are and why I feel and why you, Alan feels that there's a unique uniqueness in, in the style. Um, Alan, thank you for your time. No Fantastic. worries, thanks. Always great to have you yeah. here. And, and there was always good discussion. And I hope you guys um, get something out of it. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>